back everybody this is Newt with True X Outdoors we have Michael McQuarrie today and Michael Pitts with us this is our guest today he's gonna we're just gonna goof off and learn about hunting a little bit so <laughs> tell us where you're from Michael I'm actually from West Point Georgia and uh, Realtree's office is in Columbus and I'm about 35 45 minutes from them I actually live on the Chattahoochee River right there on Georgia Alabama line and a uh, good thing about that is I get to hunt two totally oh, yeah. separate oh, ruts yeah. from the house. So, yeah, you benefit. It's weird. The Chattahoochee River actually separates two separate herds of deer. So your Georgia deer actually start their rut on a typical Midwest pattern, like first week of November. And then you roll into Alabama, and they're more on a really late January, yeah. possibly early February rut really? over there. So we get to hunt two different, you know, ruts right. from the house. Right. That's awesome. and, and that's that that's a big kicker. A lot of people don't realize that. You yeah. know, they're mesmerized when you get to hunt two different ruts, you know, from from, from your house. So uh, do, that, does uh, Georgia open a little bit earlier than us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Georgia opens. We typically I'm not sure the exact date this year, but it's usually bow season will open around September tenth. Yeah. Somewhere give or take a day or two right in there. You got a velvet hunt going on. Uh, it's hard to kill a velvet buck in Georgia around us. You got to be real lucky. I've only killed one in Georgia, and a lot of people will go a lifetime and not even kill that one in Georgia. Right. It's not like like Kentucky. You got a good chance yeah. at killing a velvet deer. Tennessee actually started a velvet season mm. two years ago, I believe. Don't hold me to that. But you got some other areas like Wyoming. You can you got a good chance at a velvet deer. Nebraska, you got a good chance. There's some chances you got, but Georgia isn't one of them. They're usually fully shed of it by by right. season starting. Do yep. you do you prefer Georgia over Alabama to hunt deer hunt? Your Georgia deer are going to be a little bit bigger because they were brought out of a totally different area. So your body size and rack size is a little bit bigger right. over on the Georgia side than the Alabama side. If I had to pick between the two, I'd definitely lean towards Georgia. Lean towards Georgia. Yeah, are definitely. They, would you say they're easier or harder than Alabama? They're all, they, as far as that goes, they're both spooky deer. Both spooky, yeah. Yeah, southeast is tough. Yeah. Uh, just in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, it, it, and it's weird because I grew up and cut my teeth in the southeast hunting all those deer that are super wiry. And when I started hunting in the Midwest and all, that deer is more laid back. Yeah. And, you know, I remember sitting there one time in the Midwest. I believe I was in Illinois was the first place I really started hunting in the Midwest. And I remember a deer one time looked up at me. And I was like, it's over. Yeah, it, it, it is over. It's gone. I said, he's about to blow everything out of the area yeah. and the hunt's ended. Yeah. And he just lowered his head back down and went on about his business. And yeah. so it's a totally different, you know, kind of deer. And that's a good thing about a whitetail is every territory you go through throughout the U.S., they kind of hunt different. Your southeast deer hunts different than a Midwest deer. Your Midwest deer hunts totally different than a Texas deer, yeah. or Mexico kind of deer. Yeah. So. Do you think uh, it's something to do with firearms and bow hunting? I don't think so. I think it's just due to the different genetics that are in them because, you know, a lot of the deer were, were you know, placed in different areas from different places. So you've got different yeah. gene pools. Yeah. Like your Georgia deer are a little bit bigger than your Alabama deer and your Texas deer. And it's there's an age-old argument as far as where everybody's deer yeah, came right. from. A lot of people are saying your Georgia deer mainly came out of the Wisconsin area and stuff like that. And, you know, so I, everybody will argue over that where whose deer came from. But I don't think it's got anything to do with a pressure deal. Uh, it is two different territories. And in the southeast, I do a lot of podcasts from time to time. And your Midwest guys don't know what a hunt club is. Yeah. Yeah. We got hunt clubs. Yeah. You know, you'll have a hundred acres and ten guys hunting it. Yeah. So yes, that's going to pressure the deer and make them react a little bit different right. and more sketchy. But you, your habitat is totally different in the southeast versus yeah. the Midwest. You know, Midwest you got big open fields, and in the southeast the you mountains. typically well, you, not the mountains, but everything's just really, you know. It, it, everything's tight and compacted and yeah. lots of trees and bushes and 
that sort of thing. So yeah. you're dealing with two different kinds of habitat. We deal with a lot of thick cover around mm, us. Yeah. And in the Midwest, you don't deal with that. It's all open country, ag fields and that sort of stuff. So some of that could play a, play a part into it. Do you, think, you think that plays a part in why you could go up north and kill uh, a 150? It just every day, and they come down here, and a, and a 150 down here is like a 120, you know. I, absolutely, and everybody chases north. You know, yeah. your Florida guys come up into Georgia and Alabama. Your Georgia and Alabama guys go up into the Midwest. Everybody's chasing that bigger deer, and, you know, a lot of it's got to do with genetics, I think, but a lot of it's got to do with a food source, too, yeah. because you look at the Midwest, they're eating soybeans and corn out of the ag fields. They got plentiful food. Uh, so they're going to build a different fat layer, and they're going to be a bigger deer. You know, and a lot lots of time, land too. Yes, lots yeah. of times you, it's not uncommon to kill a 300-pound deer in the Midwest yeah. where that doesn't happen yeah. in the Southeast. Yeah, right. So your food content's different, and that, that's going to help the deer out right. as far as growing a bigger rack as well. Right. But I know deer in the Southeast around us that have, are given that same kind of let's just say protein yeah. and don't grow to that statue as regularly per se yeah. so I think a lot of it's genetics and yeah. then food source there's a lot of things that go on there I think you know as to why the deer are bigger up there than they are around us for sure well, have you quit poaching yet man I, I <laughs> they, they sent me to rehab <laughs> You know, and I, I'm pretty straightened out now, but I'll veer off a little bit from time to time. Hey, you say but, one in the headlights. You hey, like, no, you know, you know. <laughs> if y'all will see my backpack, there is a spotlight in there. So that's but, just for you tracking, know, though, right? That is just for tracking and tracking only. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, we have fun with those. I, I actually, that one we did with the game warden, I was like, they're never going to let him do this. Yeah. I was like, they're going to shut him down. They're never going to let him do it. But we ended up doing it. DNR was cool with it. Yeah, so cool. we, we've been running a lot of that kind of stuff. It's been getting a lot of attention, you know, just off the poaching atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, yes, anytime, sir. anytime. And where, and where can they find you? You can find me on any of Realtree stuff. Uh, I'm a part of Realtree Road Trips, and we're on the Realtree 365 app which is a great thing for your phone or TV. Uh, you can find any kind of hunting that we do from turkey to deer to elk. There's a lot of good hunting stuff on there. And we've got a Realtree YouTube channel as well for road trips. So you can find us on that as well. So, you know, I pretty much am on a lot of the social media too as well, following Realtree as far as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those. And is that, is that your personal Michael Pitts? Uh, a lot of my stuff goes through Realtree's account, okay. and then I do have a personal. My Instagram's at the Real Pitts. Okay. And uh, so that's where I go through, and then I'm under Michael Alton Pitts on the Facebook side, or okay. Michael Pitts Outdoors. Okay. I think the Michael Alton Pitts one's maxed out at 5,000, and I can't accept any more people there per se yeah. but uh the michael pitts outdoors they started that so yeah. that that's probably the place to go on facebook yes, sir. absolutely this has been another episode of true x with newt here is micah take it away micah